This is part three of a video on using code.org's app lab feet tools to create a simple game uh, for a mobile phone. Hopefully you've watched part one and part two and you have your project sort of as I am here. Quick reminder of what we've got. We've got three screens and home screen, which has the instructions and a button to get started a game screen that will be on the screen for a period of time and allows students to click on some dots. The idea being they only click on the blue dots as many times as they can, avoiding the red one. Uh, and as they click on the dots, they will jump about the screen and they're going to try and click and get as many points as they can. We had got to the point, sorry, and there's a further screen, the last one, the uh, score screen that at the end of the game will give you the points, the total number of blues you've got minus any reds uh, that you clicked on as well. So where had we got to? If I run what we've got here, we have the home screen all working, start button links to uh, the game screen, and we were able to click on either of the buttons, the red or the blue, and they'll uh, move around the screen. After the period of time, it goes on to your score is. So realistically, the only bit that we've got left to do is a way of kind of keeping track of what the scores are uh, and displaying them to the user when we go on to this final screen at the end of the game. And perhaps we'll have a, a button on here as well that will allow people to restart the game. So where are we going to begin today? Looking here at the code, <coughs> we do have the code here that's already detecting when the blue and the red dots are being clicked. So it will be in here that we will need to be keeping track of the score um, and changing the value of uh, what the score is based on which of the two buttons are pressed. In uh, computer programs, when we wish to keep track of information, we store them in something called variables. Um, variables are stored in the computer's memory and we can give each variable a, a name that we can index, uh, sort of access that variable, we can set values in it and we can take values out of it and they, we can change them, hence the name variable. In App Lab underneath it's actually using uh, a language called JavaScript because that's the, the same language that web pages use to do interactivity on uh, their pages and when you wish to create a variable, you use this command here. If you want to create it and give it an initial value, you declare a variable using this var statement. So I'm going to grab one of these and I'm going to set it to be the very first thing that kind of happens. And that means I should be able to access it anywhere in my code because it's at the, the top here. I'll be able to access it from anywhere. By default, the name of the variable is just given as x. As we're keeping track of a score, then that would be a more sensible name. When the game starts, the score should be zero, so we can give that an initial value of uh, zero at this point here. We're going to have just a little warning triangle here. The reason I say we're getting that is that we've created this variable, but we're not actually using it anywhere. So App Lab's kind of telling us, do you really need this? Uh, do you want to be doing something with it, or do you want to get rid of it? We're going to use it, first of all, we'll look at the blue dot image and think how we're going to use that. Now, to change the value of it, we're going to need to change the value of the variable called score. So we're going to assign a variable a value. So we're going to use this block here. We're not going to use the ones that have var in front of it, because that was for declaring, for making new ones. We're going to grab this block here, and after we've changed the position of the blue and the red dots on the screen, we're going to assign a new value to the variable called score. And the, var the value we want to have is whatever the value was previously plus one. So each time we go, we click on the blue dot, we want to say, well, if the score was zero, now make it one. If the score was one, now make it two. How are we going to do that? Well, we can use some maths blocks here, and I'm going to grab the plus symbol at this point. And the score, we're going to assign it a value of whatever the score was plus one. So when our program store starts, creates a variable, assigns it a value of zero, we click on a blue dot, it's going to take the value of the variable score, which is zero, add one to it, result is one, and it's going to assign it back into the variable called score. Next time around, you click on the blue dot, score's already going to have one in it. It'll add another one on and assign it into score. 
and will now contain two, etc, etc. We'd want to do the same thing if we clicked on the red dot, but instead of adding one onto score, at this time what we're going to do is we would subtract one from score. Like so. And if we just want to check that this is working, what we can do here is we can use that console.log feature that we saw earlier to say, let's log to the console, to this area here, the current value of score. Now, I've deliberately made a mistake here to show you something. We're going to console.log score. And when we run our program, watch what happens. We don't actually see the score. We just see the word score appear, appear there. The way that variables work is if you want to access the value of a variable, you don't have these speech marks around anything that is on in the message that we've got coming here. You just put the variable name. So if you want to have some text, you put some speech marks around it, and that gives us a string of characters. Um, but in our case, we want to log the value of the variable called score. So I'm removing those speech marks that were around it. Let's run our program again, start the game. And as you can see down in the console now, each time I press on the blue dot, it's adding one onto it. it wasn't quite quick enough there and logging that value to the screen there. Now I know that's working. I can kind of remove that. <laughs> And we're nearly done here with the uh, the scoring. The last thing we need to do, though, is make it so that when the game jumps onto the final your sco the score screen and it says your score is, we want the value of this variable to appear here on the screen somewhere. So I'm going to go back to the design view and I'm going to grab a label, a piece of text. And because I want to access this, um, from within the code, I'm going to give its ID something, name it something sensible. I'm going to call this score uh, label. So we have this point here where we can access the score uh, and set it a value. Let's just put a zero in there for now. Uh, and also let's make it be quite a bit bigger so we can see a nice number on there. And we'll make the box be a little bit bigger as well. Uh, so it'll, it'll fit into there. Let's make it quite a bit bigger, <coughs> like so. So the next question then would be, how would we get the actual score to appear in here? Well, what we'll want to do is in our code, at the point when we jump to that score screen, so after the timeout, function has expired you know, after the timeout has expired and this function is called to move us to that screen at that point what we want to do is set a property of the label that we just created so we're going to go set property and we want to change something to do with our score label that we just created this this element here and we want to change its the property of its text to be not equal to the word text but actually to the contents of the variable called score hopefully that makes sense let's just recap what we've got there we've got our new this label on here and we've called that label score label giving it an id in our code, we have just added a block that says set the property of the element, the ID of it with score label, i.e. this thing here, change its text value from a zero to whatever the value of the variable score is at the time that we switch to that score screen. So we go, see if that's going to work. We click on the start game. We start playing one, two, three, four, five times. Ooh, I don't think I quite hit that the last time. And we can see the score is four. Let's just check to see if that was kind of working as expected again there. So start the game. Let's click on it once, twice, and I'll just leave it there. We should have a score of two. 
Okay, let's check to see if the score minus was working as well. Let's run our game one more time and let's press it once, twice, but then press the red once. So that should now have a score of one. And we've got the main bits now of our game all kind of working. I think really to finish it off, what would be quite nice is just to have a button that would allow us to go back to the home screen, reset our score uh, and allow us to um, continue and play the game again and try and beat our scores. So let's reset this. Let's go to the design view, go to the score screen at the end. Let's drag a button on here. Let's see if we can sort of, let's call this uh, restart. So we've already got one called start button, so we'll call this one restart. Um, let's play again in there as the text. I think our button was a kind of nice green on the other screen, so we'll kind of match that a little bit. If we want to match exactly, we can jump over to the home screen. I could have a little look at this and look at its color, and I can copy that one. And we can go in here and go to here and match it. We're quite close anyway. <coughs> and there they, they would kind of match. So the user interface part of that now completed. But obviously, what do we need to do if someone does press on that button? Well, on the event that they press on that button, we we'll have a new little snippet of code that will say that the restart button has been clicked. And there's two things that we really want to happen at this point here. One of them is we will need to reset the score variable to be zero. So again, no var in front of it. I'm not making a new variable. I'm going to assign a value to an existing variable called store. And I'm going to assign it to have a value of zero. And then the next thing I'd want to happen is I'm going to go all the way back to my uh, set my screen to be the home screen again. So we're going to go to the UI controls. We say that we want to set the screen to be the home screen. And that should kind of be it now. Um, a fair amount of code here. Um, hopefully it's fairly obvious what all of this is doing now. We've got three, four different events here. One of the start button being pressed to begin the game and then the red and the blue dots being clicked, and then our restart button here. Let's just give it one last sort of check to see if that's all working now. We can click on the start button and we can start to play our game. Two, three, four would be my score at that point. Hmm, two, what happened there? Let's just check to see if this is working properly. Let's start the game. One, two, three, four. Okay, that seemed okay there. Let me just play the game uh, one more time. Let's see if this works actually, the play game again. And we start the game and we're just gonna click one. And that seems to be working. Okay, so start the game. If I click one, two, three on that one, I'm gonna end up with a, a negative score in my game of minus three. So that's us about finished with the game. A couple of suggestions that things you could do to maybe improve and build on it. One of them is you could maybe play some sounds when people press on the red button. Um, other things you could do is we could have a new variable called size. Uh, and what we could do is each time we redo the blue and the red dots, we could maybe make the blue dot size get a little bit smaller. So instead of staying at 100, maybe every time we press the button, uh, it might knock 5 or 10 off of the numbers in there to make it a little bit more uh, tricky. Okay, I hope that's all made some sense and uh, it's going to uh, get you playing around with App Lab and creating and sharing your uh, apps.